Welcome to our World of Fiery videos, covering topics of everyday importance to print providers. Today we will cover how to configure print settings on a Fiery server. Let's look at how we configure paper settings on our DFE. Generally, on any DFE, and we're going to use the Fiery for an example today, I need to configure the print system for the paper weight and the paper type, by which I mean the coded nature of the paper or the uncoded nature of the paper. I need to establish a calibration for that paper so that in the first place I linearize the tonal response on the paper and then as I go I can recalibrate back to that state in the future so I get consistent prints over time. I need to make a color profile, sometimes called characterization, which is simply to make an ICC profile for my paper that defines the color gamut and can be used by the color management system on the DFE to convert the colors from what I want them to look like, which might be swap or grackle or ISO V2, into the range of the press that's defined by this output profile. Okay? The last thing I need to think about with configuring my paper settings, so I set the paper settings for weight and coating. I get a calibration and a profile that work with this paper, and again, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration a little bit here of how to do this. I also need to make sure I keep all my other print settings constant. If I chose to take the number one sheet in your shop and make a calibration and make a profile, and I did done all that work on a particular print system at 600 dots per inch with the line three screen, and then I come in tomorrow, even if I recalibrate, but I start printing at 1200 DPI with the dot one screen, I'm going to get a very different result. The resolution and halftone screen affect the tonality and really need to be locked in in order for the profile and calibration to work the way I intended them to. So specifying paper weight, I'm going to show this again on the firing, and paper type are on the media tab. As we move across through the job properties, we will pick the output profile on the color tab. And the next tab over you see image is where we'll set the image quality settings. And again, reminding you that these need to be the same settings we use to make the calibration and profile. So here's the media section of the job properties. And I can pick on this particular press a normal sheet or a whole bunch of colored sheets here, which aren't very interesting. But if you look down at the bottom of this list, I can also choose a coded glossy or coded matte. Those three settings in particular, normal, meaning natural or uncoded, and coded glossy or coded matte are going to change the parameters of the print system. They're going to change essentially the fuser temperature and perhaps the time at with which we use to fuse the toner onto the sheet, and that's going to affect the color gamut. Okay? Before I go on, I can hear what some of you on the webinar today are thinking. You're thinking, I know what I'll do. I'll put the uncoated sheet in my press, but I'll tell him it's glossy coated. And that'll heat up the fuser, so I'll get more color on the uncoated sheet, and my customers will like me better. Please don't try this at home. These settings are designed to make your press work in an optimal way, without the paper jamming, without the paper getting stuck, without the paper getting overheated, you having a big service nightmare on your press that takes your you know, your manufacturing partner may be some time to fix for the technician to come out and change parts in the press. So while it is true that this is how the print system works, you really need to set these for the actual paper that you're printing on. If you try to cheat with these settings, you're probably going to cause some harm to your workflows and maybe to your press. The second thing we choose is the paper weight. Again, this is going to vary from DFE to DFE and even from one fiery to another based on which partner's press it's sitting in front of. But in general, we have settings for the different grammages or the different weights of the paper. It's very easy to figure out how to set these settings. If we look at the end of that paper ring that you got or the case of paper, it's going to tell you probably whether it's coded or uncoded, and it's certainly going to tell you the grammage, the GSM, so you can configure this setting properly. Next, we're going to calibrate. Calibration is essential to get consistent results on any paper with any DFE. Generally, if you're going to use a factory calibration set, you're not going to make a new calibration set and profile for your paper. You want to use a paper as much like what the manufacturer used as possible. 
So on the FIRE DFE, we often give you some tips about what that is, or you can reach out to EFI on the forums and find out the particular sheets that we might have used in your press. If you want to try to just stick to factory profiles and get a, a little bit better result. Okay? Really, to get it right, I need to make a custom calibration for your paper. When I do the recalibration later, I need to calibrate on the actual job stock. I know in many shops it's popular and certainly much easier to just calibrate the uncoated sheet in the morning, you know, the 28-pound hammer mill or whatever you might have. That is not going to recalibrate your coated sheet so that it prints consistently later in the day when you're printing uncoated. This leads me to another tip we give around calibration, which is that the best practice is typically to calibrate a substrate right before you use it. I know this isn't always possible, but if you run, let's say, three distinct paper types in your workflows, and you come in in the morning and calibrate all three of them, but you don't use the third paper type until sometime after lunch, you're not going to get as good a result as if you try to put your jobs together you say, okay, let's calibrate coded. You run as many of the coded jobs as you can. Then you calibrate the uncoded. Maybe you calibrate that third paper at, you know, 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon before you run the jobs that are going to be on that stock. Talk about profiling. The profile is used in color management to get the best color quality and to match your industry reference. So whether you're trying to match Fogre 39L or Grackle, or some other G7 based standard like SWAP or SWAP5, that's going to be essential that you have a profile created for your paper. As with calibration, for the best result, we really need to make an actual ICC profile for the paper you're going to print on and for the one you might be using to try to conform with or get compliance with a standard like Grackle or Fogra. If your paper has optical brightening agents, you're going to need to use M1 measurements. This is a little bit of a, an area, a gray area here, because if you're not going to look at prints in a light booth, and your customer isn't going to look at prints in a light booth, then you're never going to get it quite right. M1 measurements in general take longer. Certainly on the ES2000 and some other spectrophotometers, we need to scan the patches twice to get an M1 measurement. So if we're in a sort of less controlled environment without a light booth, we might be fine to use M0 which means we scan the patches once, we include all the UV, all the effect of the optical brightening agents, but we understand that if the customer goes in the light booth where there's lesser quantity of UV, this very exact quantity of UV, then our prints might tend to look yellow. Picking the profile on the fiery is a simple matter of going to the color tab, the basic settings, and we pick our output profile here, as we show. On the fiery, the profile and the calibration are linked together. So I don't have to pick the calibration. When I pick the profile, it automatically selects the calibration that's been linked to when that profile was loaded. We do this to make it easier for you. It can potentially be a challenge if you're trying to make custom profiles using custom calibration sets. Some color management tool sets for making profiles make it a little bit difficult for you to put these together properly and get them linked in the final analysis so they work together correctly. Thank you for watching. For additional resources and e-learning classes on this topic, visit our website. To see all recorded sessions and register for upcoming World of Fiery webinars, please visit efi.com forward slash WOF webinars.